Hi, this is Peter. Hi, this is Sandra. And we are Medievalist.net. And we are reviewing the second episode of The Borgias. Yes, and this was the show about Pablo the Sable Boy. True. And I didn't like this episode as much as you did because it really focused about this uh, Pablo coming back to Rome to uh, meet Lucretia, find out about his son. Uh, meanwhile, the other Borgias are not very happy that he's there. Uh, and it all ends badly for Pablo. But, um, what do you think? What do you think about is that kind of little story arc we have? I think it's important, and I think that um, he was brought back, back for a reason, not just as filler. Mm -hmm. I think that it got to showcase the difference between Juan and Cesare, mm -hmm. and that Cesare is always portrayed as the bad guy. But he's honorable. He keeps his word mm -hmm. to his sisters, like, you can't be with this guy because of your class difference, but I understand love, and I'll give you one night with him, and he deserves to see his son. Whereas it showcases that Juan's a jerk, and he's going to kill the one person his sister ever loved just because he's so consumed by power and class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the, we, when there was like all kind of scenes where we, we didn't know uh, when Pablo's getting led up to the treasure, we didn't know... If, you know, uh, Cesare had had it, you know, aimed at he was going to kill him instead. Like, you don't really find that out until the very last second. You say, oh, yeah, it's, you know, uh, they're going to, you know, Cesare is being good. And so, yeah, it really highlights the differences between the two characters. Um, but we all knew that, uh, you know, like, you kind of come in, like, Pablo's not going to have a good end to this, uh, uh, this show. Like, uh, in, like, the best thing would have happened for him is he goes on his merry way and we never see him again. But, uh, want to make sure we never see him again, period. So. Yeah, you know, and uh, the fact that, you know, Juan's gone from an idiot to just just being a jerk. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's obviously trying to play Cesare's game by having mm -hmm. um, a prostitute follow mm -hmm. Lucrezia, but it's an, it's an epic fail because Cesare's, again, one step ahead of his brother and got mm -hmm. Michelotto to, to murder his yeah. spy. They, I thought it was brilliant. I, I, you know, it's interesting how they, they, they contrast the murder of Michelotto, you know, getting rid of the prostitute at the same time, you know, almost at the same time as uh, Juan's getting rid of Pablo. So they, uh, that's kind of, uh, and how they both kind of use murder and they, how, you know, one is so much better at it than the other, really. So, because Juan's always more or less a failure with these murders and stuff like that. So Yeah, but, everything with Juan is sort of botched and, not as well thought out and he just doesn't have a grasp on how things really work and he's very very consumed with class and things he doesn't yeah. understand anything beyond money power love like he's truly he he's the one that's most fearful that he's not a Borgia right like he's like um I might not be you know I might be someone else's uh, son so he's always like I have to be a Borgia I have to be you know um, I'm no, I'm better than other people. And uh, there's that kind of dinner, uh, like <coughs> breakfast scene, I guess, where he's telling, they're trying to argue over, you know, uh, you know, is it, you know, like, uh, you know, is there a difference between, like, the nobles and the uh, peasants and stuff like that, which uh, kind of leads uh, Dad into deciding to play the poor man and go and visit the slums of Rome and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. So... Which was, again, I wasn't too impressed because that, that's kind of a, a plot that I've seen in lots of other places. So the, uh, it's like, oh, yes, there he, you know, like, he has all these servants and guards around him, yet he can still, like, he just, what, did he just tell them everyone to, you know, be quiet and, you know, go off with uh, a couple of women out to, you know, visit the brothels and gambling houses of, of, of Rome? So, like, it would never allow him to do it, so, but he does it, so. Um, I didn't care for that storyline with, um, you know, making Julia the head of accounts and yeah. you know, going in the streets and stuff. I was just way more enthralled. Like, I really loved the Juan Pablo storyline. Um, and, yeah, that, that was sort of like, um, it just wasn't very interesting for me. Like, uh, it, it kind of says, like, you know, uh, that the Pope's character, he's, he's going from one thing to another, and, like, last week he was all about doing the, uh, you know, you know, bread and circuses with his big festival. This week he has a brand new thing. Like, he wants to make Rome great, but he's, like, his, 
you know, oh, well, we'll make sure the poor get fed, you know, and we'll stop poverty. And we'll also get rid of pigeons, all the pigeons. So he gets these falcons to come. Uh, and it's, he seems all over the place. And I like how, you know, Cardinal Sforza comes in and says, you know, oh, we kind of, you know, watch our money, you know, and stuff like that. And folks, well, that's your job, you know, so. But uh, he seems, Cardinal Sforza seems like the only, like, sane man in all of the Vatican, so. Well, that was also interesting that Cesare um, captures Ursula, his former lover, who is now Sister Martha, and he sort of forces her to be uh, well, he painted. Showed, he shows her like very sadistic. Like you, know, you almost, you almost think that he was going like, to rape her, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like that's like you know, in front of that you know painter, you know, and stuff like that, and like, and he's like, you know, like he's very forceful and stuff like that. Like, and you can see his little kind of little bit of madness in it. I don't think he would ever rape her. He's in love with her, which is also why he's sympathetic to his sister's plight. Mm -hmm. And I think they showed that scene to kind of emphasize that. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was interesting. I want to see what happens with those two. And then lastly, um, speaking of cardinals, Cardinal de la Rovere is on his way to Rome with a monkey named Julius. Yes, oh, and uh, that's a great name. And if you will find out why that's a great name later, hopefully, if this show continues on. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, like, you know, I love seeing him uh, as Colm Fiore doing the acting bit. Uh, and, it, like, this kind of, like, where he's so fearful of what's being fed that he has to have a monkey, you know, like, eat it for him uh, first. So, and then, uh, and then, uh, of course, but he, despite being, like, almost an invalid, you know, he still takes out two guys. Two as, uh, would be, like, assassins, or I don't know if they were assassins or just, like, highwaymen. So. Um, I think assassins, and I I think it was, like, this kind of Nicolas Cage uh, kind of mm -hmm. moment of mm -hmm. total random, I'm going to be a badass, and they even gave him a cornball line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. sometimes you need a little badness with the goodness. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, man, this is so cornball. But it was good. And mm -hmm. he like, looked like he was like ready to jump out with his robes and, mm -hmm. you know, pop yeah. one. Like, he, he managed to throw that, you know, that knife really good for a guy that's in, like, oh, you know. Yeah, um, seriously. That was hysterical. Yeah. There was, like, a Wild West moment in the yeah. back of the nun's cart. But anyways, I thought that was funny. Yeah. And, and the monkey harkens back to um, season one in the original, I think the first or second episode where uh, Cesare brings that monkey to dinner to taste the food so oh, he doesn't yeah. get poisoned, his death doesn't yeah. get poisoned before he's... Right, right. Oh, there was yeah, something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I kind of think that's interesting, you know, and um, I want to see what happens uh, once he arrives in Rome after, uh, see if he's going to take... Uh, Cesare's advice and, you know, you're with us or you're dead. Mm -hmm. See what happens when he gets there mm -hmm. or who he can get on his side. They, well, I think it's all starting to gear up that, like, this third episode looks like it's the kind of big plots of the of the season that are going to move forward because, you know, we, it seems uh, Del Rovere is going to meet up with uh, Savonarola in Florence. Uh, we're going to see uh, uh, King Charles. He seems to be back, getting back into it. He, I don't think he was even in this episode, although there was like a scene of the torture uh, of the uh, like the Prince of Naples uh, there. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you know, like uh, it seems like you know next week's show again will be getting back into the high politics of it all. And uh, but, yeah, uh, you know, like I said, like to me, I wasn't too impressed with this show. I thought it was, I you know like it kind of like last week. It seemed like like a one-off kind of episode. Instead of like a kind of like the story arc, you know, moving along. So, I would suggest this. Um, if I don't think it's a one-off, only because I think the reason also they brought back Paulo is that Lucrezia. Mm -hmm. This is a, a guess. We'll find out that Juan was behind whatever happens to him, and mm -hmm. then that will cause a massive rift in their family because that Could will be. pit Juan not only against Cesare, who already hates his guts. But now that Cesare knows Juan's hurt Lucretia, it just mm -hmm. might spiral that that 
thing that's holding them holding them back from killing each other that might just tip the scales. So I think that there was a plot purpose for. I, I can see where you're going because they Paolo. really have to get that kind of triangle between the the Lucretia and her two brothers and to kind of build that conflict. They just can't be fighting over, you know, uh, little things. You know, there has to be something more to it. So. So I think Paulo is the the scale tipper. Yeah, yeah. But well, we'll see. We'll see next week. Yeah, and we're looking forward to it. So. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Good night.